I can see into the future and I can see futures in your exam. Well, of course I can because they're really, really examinable. And they're also a topic that people find very difficult and really challenging. I'm Andrew Moore, ACCA expert tutor, and I'm here to show you that futures actually are quite nice. I remember when they click, you just think, oh, I get it. So that's how they work. And then suddenly it becomes a whole lot easier. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you what futures are, how they work with some simple numbers, and then think about some pros and cons. So you're prepared should I be forecasting the future correctly. So we're going to look at these three things. We'll start with the concept of futures, then we'll think how it can come up in exams, and then we'll look at the pros and cons. Always good to be able to discuss futures. Even if your numbers aren't perfect, being able to discuss them will earn you credit. So very important you don't just completely disregard that and you do get some discussion down. So let's start with the concept. And we're gonna look at a slightly different thing with this. We're gonna look at gold futures. Now. You might be thinking, well, they're not going to be my exam. Why are you bothering with these? What I want to do is just make sure you understand the basics of how futures work. So, yes, we can use these for foreign exchange and interest rates and yeah, even other things like Bitcoin and shares and all sorts of bits. But having a product that you all understand and know is going to be a lot easier to get the concept yeah, a little bit more simply. So I'm going to use gold and I'm going to do a little timeline here. And I've decided now, so today that in nine months time, I'm going to buy a kilogram of gold. So I thought, right, I'm going to make an investment. I can't do that now. Now, that would be actually a really easy way to protect against the price change, wouldn't it? Would just be to buy it now, but I can't afford it. I need to save up. As you'll see in a moment, this is quite a significant investment. So I need to save up some money. So then in nine months time, I will then go and actually buy my kilogram of gold. So I'll go to the trader and I'll buy that kilogram of gold. Now, the problem I face here is that the price of gold is fairly volatile. So as you can see from gold.co.uk, the price of gold does change quite a lot. And as you can see in recent months, it's been going up quite a bit, isn't it? So I'm worried that in nine months time, the price of gold might have gone up loads and then I won't be able to afford it. So at the moment, according to that graph, it's around about 90,000 pounds. So this is in GBP. But then in nine months time, who knows? I don't know what it's going to be. And that makes me really scared. That makes me really worried. And therefore, I want to protect against that price rising. Now, as I just said, I could, in theory, just say, right, I'm just going to buy it now then. If I'm worried about the price changing, I'll buy it now. But I can't. I can't afford it. Now, this concept is exactly the same for those other things I mentioned. It might be foreign exchange. It might be interest rates. Yeah, we don't need it now. We don't. We can't get it now, potentially. So we want to lock into a price that we can get in the future. And that's what futures allow us to do. We're going to lock into a rate so we know in nine months time, this is how much it's going to cost. Now, what I'm going to do is show you two scenarios now. What if the price of gold increases? And then what if the price of gold decreases? What's going to happen to my futures? What's going to happen to my cost of gold. So let's start by thinking about gold prices increasing. So that's the same timeline as just before. And I've spoken to some traders and they've offered me some futures at 92,000 pounds. Now what that means is I'm gonna buy futures now for 92,000 pounds and that's gonna cover a kilogram of gold. So that's perfect, yeah, exactly the amount I need. And that's for nine months time. So I, we, there's no sort of difference in timings or the amount or anything at this point. We're assuming that this is what they call a perfect hedge. So what I'm doing there effectively is locking into a cost of 92,000. Now I know that's a little bit more than the 90,000 cost today, but I'm happy to do that because I'm worried that it's gonna go up to like 100,000 or 120,000 in nine months. So, okay, it's a little bit more expensive than it is now, but I can't afford it now anyway. So I'm gonna agree, I'm gonna buy some futures now for 92,000. Now let's say then that the cost of gold in nine months time is 94,000. So that is bad news for me, isn't it? So I'm gonna put a little sad face, which I like to do just to sort of show you what's happening. The cost of gold has gone up. At the moment, it was 90, wasn't it? At the moment is sort of the, the market value of it, but now it's 94. This is bad news for me because the cost of gold has gone up. But luckily I bought those futures, didn't I? At 92,000. So what will happen to the value of those futures? The value of futures will also go up. Because the cost of gold has gone up, the value of those futures is also gonna go up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sell those futures now for 94,000. They've moved in line with the cost of gold. 
So I'm going to sell the futures for 94,000 that I bought for 92,000. And as you can see, what I've got then is a 2,000 pound gain. And that makes me happy. Yeah. So a 2,000 pound gain on my futures, but the cost of gold was a bit more expensive. Now remember with hedging, one thing will do well, one thing will do badly. So this is why I like to visualize that with my sort of happy face and my sad face, because they're always going to offset. So in summary, overall, what we've had then is the cost of gold was 94,000, but we gained 2,000 on the futures. So overall, it's cost me 92,000. And would you believe it? That's what we said in the first place, wasn't it? So the net cost is 92,000. So I've paid exactly what I expected, which is great. So that's how they've protected me in this case. The price of gold did go up. So were getting futures a good idea? Yeah, they were. It was a good idea to take out these futures. It saved me 2,000 pounds as a result of using this hedge. So well done me, that worked out well. Now the next situation is what happens if the price of gold decreases. I wanted to show you both of these. Because remember with futures, we're locked into that rate. Whether good or bad, we're locked into that rate. So same scenario, I need a kilogram of gold in nine months and I buy the futures for 92,000. So that's the same. But now the cost of gold has dropped. It's plummeted 85,000 pounds now per kilo. So that would be good news for me, wouldn't it? Because I'm buying that gold and I'll be going, oh, good, excellent. The price of gold has dropped. It's only going to cost me 85 grand. However... I locked into that 92,000 pounds when I bought those futures at 92. So remember the value of the futures will move in line with the underlying product. So in this case, gold. So the value of the futures has dropped to 85,000 as well in line with that gold price in nine months. So what we see here is I've made a loss of 7,000 on my futures. And that is a very sad state of affairs, isn't it? That is not good news for me. So in this one, the gold price was my happy face because actually the cost of gold moved in my favor. But because I took out those futures, I do end up with a loss of 7,000. So in summary, the cost of gold was 85. I then lost 7,000 on the futures. And guess what? Overall, it's cost me 92,000. I've ended up paying 92,000 regardless. So hopefully you can see in both situations there, you know, no matter what happens, whether the price of gold goes up or down, it's cost me 92,000. And that's the point of futures. I'm locking into that rate. So I'm protected no matter what happens. Now, as I said, that is you know, quite a simple example in that we're not dealing with any timing differences. I've assumed like the number of contracts is exactly what we need, etc. But if you can understand that concept, you know, okay, right, this is what futures are doing. That will help so much. I remember when that clicked for me, I was like, oh, right, I get it. Okay, one thing's going to do well, one thing's going to do badly. They offset, and as a result, we end up paying the same amount. So it is all good. Now, just in terms of the concept as well, futures are available in the real world. Yeah, people professionally trade futures. And if you check out tradingview.com, you can see the website at the bottom there. This has loads of futures that you can trade. And as you can see, this is the currency one. So this is the current um, currency future prices. You can see the changes and so on. But if you look sort of at that little tab in the middle, just above currency futures, you've got things like agricultural, energy, metals, the world indices, interest rates. So yeah, again, these things are traded in the real world. And some people take out futures to protect their position, you know, hedging essentially. Other people trade in futures just to try and make money. So people buy and sell them thinking, right, I can make some um, quick bucks here. So there is a market sort of for, for different people. But as you can see, it's a good thing to check out that because, again, it is something that happens in the real world. This isn't just a, a concept that you need for exams. This is something that is actually occurring. Now, talking of exams, you're probably thinking, great, um, look at all that. Oh, that's brilliant, but it's not going to be like that in my exam. So why do I care? Well, this is how it is going to be in your exam. So this is how futures do appear in exams. And the concept of a future, as we've seen in that example with the gold, is to lock a company into a rate today for a transaction happening later. So in that case, I locked into the £92,000 today for a transaction happening in nine months' time. Now, the key thing with futures is that these are standardized and traded products. So they're for a fixed amount. So when it says standardized, they'll have a fixed amount associated with them and they'll have a fixed expiry date as well. 
So because they are traded, they need to be standardized. We can't have you know, one future for one price, one future for a completely different amount, different dates. It gets too confusing. So these have to be in standardized blocks. So for example, a foreign exchange futures contract might be something like this. So it might have an exchange rate attached. So I just made that up, maybe you know, nowhere near the current rate, but I don't really mind. Then you've got the contract size, which is £62,500. And then it will have an expiry date, let's say June. So what that means is if we take out that contract, it will allow us to exchange £62,500 at that exchange rate before the end of June. So we always assume that futures contracts expire at the end of the month stated. So that would be the 30th of June that we'd need to do that by. So then people buy and sell those, they trade them, or you can use them for your hedge as well. Um, so that's an example of a contract. Now that does present a couple of problems, which we'll talk about later in terms of, yeah, what if you needed to cover £100,000? You can't, can you? Because you can only buy them in blocks of 62500 in this example. So that leads to having to work out the number of contracts and you might have to round those. And also, what happens if you want to use that before the end of June? What happens if you want to use it on the 6th of June? You can, but it might not be the rate that you expect. And that's something called basis risk. So there are a couple of issues with these, but again, they still are really useful for protecting against rate changes. Now, in terms of how futures work in the calculations, I always use this sort of template with my students. I love a pro forma. Students love setting this up and it works really nicely. So I always set up the hedge now. And as part of setting up the hedge, you're going to need to decide, do we need to buy or sell? What's the expiry date? And how many contracts do we need? So that's always my setup. If I'm doing any hedging question using futures, I'll think, do I need to buy or sell the futures? Which expiry date shall I use? And how many contracts do I need to cover the amount I'm looking to hedge? Then what I do is arrange the hedge. So I will order the futures. So that will just be a quick one line in the exam saying, right, we need 73 June futures at this price. And at that point, a company would pay something called a margin. So it's a little deposit they put down to order the futures. And that is sort of is almost just saying, like, if these futures then go on to make a loss, um, I've got enough money available to do that. Now, if the futures make a gain, you get it back. It's not like a, a premium or anything. It's not like with options, you have to pay a premium. Margins are just a little deposit to almost prove that you've got the funds available. And then you've got the result of the hedge, which comes later. So we're going to do in here the transaction. So that's what happens is if we haven't hedged at all. So that's like me just going and buying the gold at whatever the rate is on the day. Then you see what's happened to your futures. Have they made a gain or a loss? And how much? And then you just combine the two to get the total. So that's the overall plan. You set up the hedge now, you arrange the hedge now, and then you do the result of the hedge later. That's on the day that you're actually doing the deal. That's when all that stuff happens in pink on the right there. And that is a really simple and lovely way to set up futures of any type, whether it's interest rates, foreign exchange, Bitcoin, gold, wheat, milk, anything, you can use this and it will work really nicely. So as I said, discussion of this is going to be important. So some pros and cons to finish up with. The great thing about futures are they allow you to fix the rate in advance. They protect your position. So it provides more certainty and protects against the rate moving against you. They're also quite competitive prices because these are traded Futures can be quite good value compared to something like a forward, which the bank provides, which may not be the best rate. So they can be quite competitive. And you don't need to pay a premium. With options, you have to pay a premium up front. As I mentioned a minute ago, there is a margin, which I'll, I'll touch on. But with this, it's not a huge cost up front, which is nice as well. Now, there are some negatives. It is a fixed contract size. So if you needed to hedge a slightly odd amount or well, almost any amount, really, it's unlikely you're going to be able to get the exact number of contracts to match that. So you end up having to either over hedge or under hedge. So get too much or too little. These fixed expiry dates, futures usually expire at the end of March, June, September and December. So if you use them before those expiry dates, you get this thing called basis risk, which is where you may not get the rate that you thought because of the timing difference. So we have to look out for that. And also they require that initial margin and these things called margin top ups. So if your futures are making a loss, you may then have to top up your margin account to make sure you've got enough cash available to cover future losses. So there's a bit of a cash flow issue there and potentially a bit of admin to do as well. 
The other thing fundamentally with futures, because we are fixing into a rate in advance, if the rate gets better for us, as we saw in the second situation with my gold, where the gold actually got cheaper, it might have been a bad idea. You know, I ended up having to pay £7,000 because I took out the future. So you might lock into a rate that isn't actually better for you, um, which is another downside. And there we go, that's it. Futures made easy. So understanding the concept is gonna be a really important thing. It's all about practice. So the more questions you do on futures, the more you see that actually, okay, these are all right. And if you get that set up, if you get that pro forma right that I showed you, then you're gonna be in a really, really good position as well. So yeah, they are fine. They just take a bit of practice. And once you've done that, you can learn to love them. And yeah, maybe you'll love them as much as me one day. So thanks ever so much for watching. Make sure you check out my other videos on hedging. So loads of videos on my channel about different hedging products, including interest rate swaps, money market hedges. I work for a full hedging question on my channel as well. So make sure you look at all those um, to see other hedging products made easy as well. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more videos like this, where I break down those tricky topics into really easy to follow steps, then subscribe on YouTube. You can also follow me on LinkedIn for more exam advice and check me out on socials. I also have my own course helping students to pass their exams. Thanks for watching.